We're here with Jonathan Potter, Head of the Department of Social Sciences, Professor of Discourse Analysis, uh, talking about discursive psychology. So Jonathan, what is discursive psychology? Um, one way of looking at it is approaching psychological matters uh, from an interactional perspective, seeing how psychology becomes live in interaction, how psychological categories are drawn upon and used, how people orient to one another as having states and dispositions, the way people display things such as emotions, anger, or intellect or deviousness and so on. So how does that come off in, in these interactions? What, what are the kinds of things that, that you might um, look at? Well, it, it varies in all kinds of uh, different studies, but uh, classically, the kind of work in the early 90s, which was very focused on what would now be called epistemics, mm. uh, is looking at the way people organise descriptions to manage their own accountability and the accountability of other people, people they're talking about or people they're talking to. Um, so there, there's a strong... Um, focus on using uh, ethnomythological ideas and conversationalistic ideas, but thinking about them in sp specifically how they manage psychological matters. Okay, so, so how does um, CA, uh, 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 discursive psychology pick up um, CA and ethnomethodology in doing its study? Um, I guess in the roots of it, I mean if you want to give me to give a simple, simple potted history, um, in the 1980s, um, I was working with a lot of CA um, studies and so on, and also reading a lot of ethnomethodology, but as well as post-structuralist work, mm. but was increasingly interested in the way that the CA and ethno work allowed you to do analytic work of a serious kind. Um, and it picked up work which is already looking at issues of description and so on by, for example, Anita Pomerantz in CA or Mike Lynch in Ethnomethodology. Um, and Derek Edwards and I in particular were thinking about how those kind of ideas can be developed by looking at core psychological issues such as what is attribution, uh, what is memory and, and so on. So our initial go at that was a trying to re-specify these very core notions from psychology, attribution was arguably the core notion of social cognition around that time, the late 80s, memory core uh, notion in cognitive psychology. Mm. And we were rethinking these things in terms of descriptions and accountability. So instead of thinking about how a version of something tells you how that person's remembered it, mm. rather you're looking at how a version of something in the past is being ordered, put together to do some business in, in the present. And in attributional terms, the management of agency, authority, causality in attributional terms, the way the, that version is put together to manage attributional issues. So rather than having the actor as being driven by A, what they can remember, and B, how their how their attributional heuristics or informational processing leads them to understand causality in a particular way rather one looks at the way in which a description or version is embodied in practices doing some practical work which manages issues of or, of uh, causation and agency and accountability uh, in the way in which the version is put together. So it was a kind of a a way of rethinking that whole zone in an interactional way. And I still think that's right at the centre of how discursive psychology thinks about its uh, its kind of project. So um, how do, what, what, what is the project of discursive psychology then? Um, well, in its extreme form, the project of discursive psychology is a project of replacing much of the confused cognitive psychology and cognitive science with the one located in a more Wittgensteinian or Saxian tradition focused in particular on people's practices and the way psychology is live in the place that it ought to be live, that is in where people are living their lives. Mm. Um, and it should also 
in that process improve cognitive psychology and cognitive science by getting rid of some of the methodological confusions there and leaving uh, more sensible kind of questions. Right. Um, so that, that's a central part of it. Thank you very much, Jonathan.